This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and live today. Things have been building up. All of the energy and excitement for Christmas that we've been experiencing since the day after Thanksgiving accumulates to this moment as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. It's been a time of go, go, go as we've decorated our homes with garland, lights, and a tree, as we've baked Christmas cookies, listened to Christmas music, attended company parties, and shopped till we drop. The only time that things really seemed to slow down was when we were standing in line to make a purchase at the mall. But seriously, no longer do we have to feel like we are go, go, going. Rather, we can take time to slow, slow, slow down from our Christmas routine in order to contemplate the true meaning of this ever popular holiday. Today is a special day for Christian believers as the story of baby Jesus is recited to us once again. You can't help but feel the presence of God as we are reassured that our God loves us so much that he sent his son to us. The chaos of our lives is momentarily suspended. Our thoughts and fears are relieved. Indeed, in the words of the prophet Isaiah, a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. As I reflect on my Christmas experiences, I cannot help but observe this transition from go, go, go to slow, slow, slow. It's a nice feeling. This past week, my daughter Landry read a children's Christmas book titled the very special baby for the kids video message on the website. This is a book that is very familiar to me as my dad used to read me this same story when I was a young child. As I listened to her tell the story, I couldn't help but think that maybe we have things just a little bit backwards. Maybe the day of Christmas shouldn't be just a time to slow things down. Maybe, just maybe, it should signal the start of the time to actually take things up a notch by channeling these feelings that we receive at Christmas time and using them as the necessary adrenaline boost to live out our calling in God's wonderful world. In the very special baby, we hear the story of Joseph and Mary's journey to Bethlehem. The scenes are divided into five different sections. The first scene is walk, walk, walk. The duo journeys from Nazareth to the city of David, known as Bethlehem. Scene two, knock, knock, knock. Joseph and Mary seek shelter at an inn, but instead find housing in the innkeeper's barn. Scene three, sleep, sleep, sleep. The tired couple finds rest, and soon Mary gives birth to her firstborn son. Scene four, hush, hush, hush. Mary gently cradles the child in her arms and kisses him on the forehead. This is a reminder that the reason God enters the world in the first place is to show his people that his love for us is also unconditional. Finally, the last scene is run, run, run. This is probably my favorite part of the whole Christmas narrative because it involves folks like you and me, your common run-of-the-mill people. A group of shepherds is living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. It seems to be your average and ordinary evening, herding the flock together and protecting them from the predators. However, this would not be your average and ordinary evening. This would be a holy night worth remembering as an angel appears before the terrified men with good news of great joy. The Messiah has been born. The King is here. After being told of the Savior's birth, the shepherds decide that this event is too important to wait. They must leave their flocks behind and go to the manger in Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place that the Lord has made known to them. So they go with haste. They run, 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 run. I picture the group of men acting like a bunch of little boys, sprinting to see who is the fastest, 
Who will be that first one to happen upon the newborn king? But the story is more than just the journey to see this Christ child. When the shepherds arrive at the stable where Jesus lays, they become changed people. We read in the Gospel of Luke that when they see Jesus lying in the manger, they make known to Mary and Joseph what had been told to them about the child. But even more so, they return to the fields glorifying and praising God for all that they have seen and heard as it has been told to them. This good news of great joy transforms these shepherds into evangelical people, ones who will share the gospel to everyone. The message that they carry is news that is ever so important, one that trumps even the everyday duties of watching their flock of sheep. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. Today, we don't just remember and celebrate that special and holy night so long ago, but rather we remember and celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ has entered into our lives. Like the shepherds, we race with all of our might to kneel before our Savior, to catch a glimpse of his majesty and his glory. And when we do, we become changed. We're amazed at what we find at the manger and the things that Jesus does for us. We treasure his presence in our lives and hold on to his words of promise. With Jesus in our hearts, we not only feel the kindness, forgiveness, and the love of God, but we are called to demonstrate these qualities ourselves, all of which are actions that require us to move forward with haste and excitement able, ready, and willing to share our discoveries with others. Run, run, run. Jesus' birth moves us with joy to keep running. While we might feel like it's time to walk, 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 or even sleep, 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 in reality it is a time to gear things up and to praise and glorify God for the gift of Jesus Christ. With news as great as we have, there is no way we can just kick back, relax, and pretend that we have not been transformed by this life-giving gift. Thus, we keep running. Running here, running there, running everywhere. Spreading the news that Jesus Christ is born. Born for you. Born for me. Born for all of humanity. Amen. Remember as you go about your day, that yesterday is gone, tomorrow does not yet belong to you. So why not live today, knowing that you never walk alone? Merry Christmas. See y'all next week. Later.